Um, so uh, this is going to be a, a, a very, no, elementary no, but, but slow. Uh, because I am old. And um, so when you're old, you think about simple things. So I'm going to write down actually, in fact, what Sasha wrote in his last lecture, if you were here, uh, piatically, the last exact sequence uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, vit vectors and so on. Uh, I'm going to write in terms of Hodge structures. So we're going to consider coma extensions. And what are Comer extensions? They are the world's simplest uh, of extension of Hodge structures. Z of 1 goes to k, where k is some rank 2 uh, Hodge structure, goes to z of 0, goes to 0. OK, now, there really is not much going on there. It's about as simple as it gets. Um, but I want to claim that, in fact, uh, it's worth looking at. Um, so let me just take a minute to show you uh, a, a few of the standard tricks about this. Uh, if so, this is, I, I have in mind, these are Hodge structures, and this is mysterious. But we write down the standard exponential sequence. Goes to um, C. Goes by exponential C cross. Goes to 0. And so we'd like to construct an extension of Hodge structures. And so what we do is we don't take Hodge structures. We write down here just, just the, um, the abelian group the, the, the z values of our putative extension of Hodge structures. So here it's clearly just going to be z. And you choose uh, a map, uh, which is determined by sending 1 to some a in here. And uh, then you, you just follow your nose. You take the pullback. Uh, so in the pullback, you have, again, z times 2 pi i. And you will have something here, which we'll call kz. Uh, and you'll have, uh, you'll have that. But we want to get an extension of Hodge structures. We need the Hodge filtration. So what we'll do is we'll actually tensor with c. So here we have c, and here we have kc, and here we have c times 2 pi i. Uh, and uh, let's see, I'll give this map a, a name. I'm going to use the same notation. Uh, mu, and maybe I choose, just for convenience, I choose a, a splitting uh, just in the level of abelian groups. And so this map mu, um, I will uh, regard the value of mu on the element in here, which is uh, 0. Uh, 0, 1, I guess. Uh, so that's an element in here. And uh, it's exponential. So we'll call this element, um, say, equals, say, log. Well, in fact, what it'll be, it'll, it'll be log of a. And so it will go to a. Um, <coughs> and then to define, so here I'll tensor with c, c. And C here. Uh, and to define my Hodge structure, I need simply to define, uh, if you work it out, uh, I need to define F0 uh, uh, F uh, inside here. And by definition, F0 will simply be the kernel of mu. So it's essentially. Uh, that, that's the whole story. I won't, I won't take the time to, to say more about that, but that's, that's more or less the story. OK, now it's so simple, uh, it simply depends on the choice of, of an element A. But the nice thing is that if you look at 
A, so the role of A, if you're just thinking of Hodge structure, the role of A is a little mysterious. It really, C, C cross is the X group of Z, uh, of Z of 0 by Z of 1. Um, but the interesting thing uh, is the period. The only period that appears here is log A. So if you say to yourself, well, I, somebody has given me a uh, Hodge structure whose period is a log. And I, there are two examples I have in mind. One of them um, is the uh, wonderful, famous conjecture of, uh, <coughs> of Zagier and, <coughs> and uh, Gross um, on, well, it's a little vague because it's such a, a, a complicated story, but roughly speaking, it says under uh, appropriate circumstances, uh, you get heights that are logs of algebraic numbers. That's roughly so uh, gross. Zagier. Fortunately, neither of them are here, so uh, I can make up the story. But gross Zagier will say that uh, appropriate or certain heights. in arithmetic are of the form log, or, or maybe some, some number, uh, maybe some algebraic number d times log of another algebraic number. Uh, that's, that's the basic shape um, of the gross zagier uh, conjecture. Um, okay, so what do I what do I want to do? So, you know, if you're like a carpenter with a hammer, and everything is looking like a looking like a nail, well, if you have your Kummer extension, and you look at Grozagia, you say, "Aha! There must be a Kummer extension, and the height must appear." as the period of this Kummer extension. Now, of course, you, the, the, the magic is in how to construct the Kummer extension, right? So we, we then would like to construct some interesting uh, Kummer extensions. And I'm going to write, I'm going to construct two of them. Uh, one, uh, so these are Kummer extensions. And the first one is going to be in geometry. And um, uh, what, what can I say? Um, it grows out of, it's, 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 it's my work, but it really, I, I have to give some credit to uh, uh, Emre Sertos uh, and uh, Robin. De Jong, because I was working with them on, so I, we worked on uh, by extensions. Um, and um, they were sort of, I'll explain what a by extension is in a second, but basically a by extension ordinarily involves some kind of, of arithmetic, right? And it's, it's a, so what is, what is it? Let's let's what is a by extension? B. Um, uh, it's a Hodge structure, a mixed Hodge structure. Uh, so it's a mixed Hodge structure, and it it sort of looks like a Kummer extension, kind of on steroids, or maybe maybe a pregnant Kummer extension because it has a big bulge in the middle. Um, it's um, it has uh, three weights, and so W minus 2 of B is just Z of 1. And um, W minus 1 of B is, um, well, it depends on the geometry, but it is 
uh, some cohomology, I'll say it's h 2r minus 1 of x with z of r. I should, I'm going to regret taking z, so let me take q here, because things can go wrong with torsion. Uh, q of r. Uh, so this is a usual geometric situation. x is a smooth projective variety, and um, I'm looking at uh, cycles of codimension r. And w0 of b is, um, is just is q, q0. No, so the, the, the ger, I have to say ger, you're right, ger. Ger w minus 1. And here, uh, w, w modulo w minus 1. OK, so we have, it's a mixed Hodge structure with, with three weights. And it's a kind of a standard uh, modern way to think about um, the Picard scheme and, and uh, so on. Um, so uh, we were working together, uh, myself with uh, Emma and Robin. And they were interested in, in these by extensions because they, it's, there's arithmetic there. You have heights. It's, it's rich. But I started to wonder, because the, the game seemed to be playable, when, in fact, my ambient variety didn't have any. Uh, suppose this was equal to 0, right? And of course, if this is equal to 0, my b becomes what? Well, it has a q of, minus, a q of 1. And then here's my, my b. Uh, sort of a, a, poor, a poor man's b. And then the quotient is, is q of 0. And lo and behold, I get a, uh, a Kummer extension. Right? But the nice thing is there's a nice way to construct these b's. And so let me try to say it at least vaguely correctly. Um, suppose that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to change notation here. I'm sorry. I kind of let me take x from now on to be script p, and this is a smooth projective variety. <coughs> so uh, what I want to give myself, I'll choose. Uh, I'll make some choices here. Um, so let's let. I want to look at some cycles. So I'll have y and z are to be algebraic cycles on p. And uh, let's see what I, what I did here. Uh, let me suppose that uh, the dimension of y plus the dimension of z is equal to the dimension of p minus 1. OK? So the baby case is take p to be p1, and take y and z to be 0 cycles. OK, now, now here we go. Well, this should go all the way up. And now those guys should come down. This guy should come down. Is it blocking? I can't tell. Should I move this down just a tad? Okay. OK, so um, I give myself these cycles y and z, um, whose dimensions sum up to one less than the dimension of the ambient variety. Or um, then um, I want to assume some other things. First of all, I want to assume that y 
and z are, are homologically equivalent to 0. So that's the second assumption. And I also want to assume that the supports of y and z are disjoint. Okay. So the stupid case to keep in mind is take uh, p equals p1 and take y equals y1 minus y0 and take z equal to z1 minus z0. Okay, but, but you, you can take much richer uh, things than that. And then what I want to look at is the cohomology group H2R. So in general, I want R to be as I said. So I'll take H2R minus 1 of uh, P. Yeah, so now I'm going to write something that is really not, not quite precise. Um, Q of R. Uh, I'm sort of cheating here. Um, because, of course, Y and Z are cycles. They have signs associated, whereas what I'm writing here looks like they're just sets, uh, or, or they don't have any signs associated to them. But you have, to, you, you, you have to take this with a grain of salt, and since time is tight, I'll let you add the salt. But if you do, if you play the game right, so I put this maybe in quotes, if you play the game right, what you find is that this is, is a bi-extension. That means that I have 0, I have q, q of 1 as the smallest piece. And then I have h2r uh, minus 1 of p, where r is the, is the appropriate uh, number uh, for the uh, codimensions of y and, and z. 2r uh, minus 1 of p, q of r uh, for the weight. Uh, minus one part of this, and I have q zero uh, for the other part for the weight zero. Okay, but this is purely geometric. This construction is totally geometric. It doesn't see, or at least not. I mean, it, it doesn't see in any direct way this group here. So I am free to assume. So let's assume that this equals 0, which we can perfectly well do. I mean, I can take p, I can take, for example, uh, p equals pn, or more generally, p uh, equals a flag variety. So this is the middle part, right? Uh, well, and the, crucial thing, uh, the crucial thing here is first of all that the dimension should be as I said, that the two, the sum of the two dimensions should add up to one less than the dimension of p, and uh, secondly that um, uh, what am I saying? Uh, so this is zero. So I'm asking what, what is this? Ah, this is zero. <laughs> this. <laughs> this. I missed my arrow. Missed. Okay. Um, so maybe some, some example, just the stupid example would be uh, p, as I said, p equals p1 and y and z uh, disjoint zero cycles of degree zero. But another example would be um, take p equals um, p3. So r is the dimension of the So r, yeah. Uh, so I want that, yeah, I, you're right. I, I, left, I forgot to say. Um, let's say that r is the co-dimension of um, one of the cycles. Uh, Does it matter? Co-dimension of line. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, I could take p equals p3, and I could take y and z to be um, of the form summation ni uh, ci, where the ci are curves, and the so sum of the ni is 0. So I'll say y is this, and z is a similar thing. So I'm, now they both have the same dimensions as the summation uh, mj uh, dj uh, with the sum mj equals 0. And the crucial condition is that the, the supports of y and z should be disjoint. Okay. And then, as I say, I'm cheating a little bit with the description here. You have to, you have to get it right. But if you get it right, you, you find that this is a by-extension, but it's, it's a degenerate by-extension. Uh, because I took a projective space here. So clearly, in this case, the relevant number 2r minus 1 is going to be 3. And um, uh, ah, you're, you're right. Two, uh, the co-dimension is not quite symmetric. So r, let's say, is the co-dimension of z. Because you want to go back to boundary to h2l in y. And so this should be the fundamental class, so it should be. Anyway, it's one, it's, it's probably why you, you want before our co-dimension y. Yeah, uh, sorry. Well, it's one or the other. I'm, 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 I've gotten myself confused here. But um, if, you, if you try it, uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because they're both the, the same dimension. But, but it, you're right, it does matter if they're different dimensions. You have to get the right one in the right order. Um, it's an exercise. OK, but anyway, uh, you, you get this degenerate by extension because the relevant uh, odd degree cohomology is 0. But the uh, degenerate uh, by extension is exactly a Kummer extension. Okay, So um, we're back where we started. Um, something interesting has happened secretly. Um, we saw with the Kummer extension, there was this mysterious A that we got to choose because we were choosing the Kummer extension. But now we're given the Kummer extension. So there is an A. There is some number. And it, there's also log A, which is the period. Okay. So what is the A in the Kummer extension? Well, whenever you have a mystery in mathematics, you always look at the stupidest, easiest case. And the stupidest, easiest case is the case when y and z are points. Say, as I wrote before, y1 minus y0 and z1 minus z0. And that p is p1. And then you work it out. And I, I will spare you the, the computation. But you work it out, and you find that A uh, is equal to the cross ratio of, of, of Y and, and Z. So I mean, say in, in words, what you do is you write Y. So Y is the divisor of a function. And then you evaluate that function on Z in the obvious, in the obvious way. So, OK, that's easy. But now, suppose that we looked at the second example. P is P3, and I have some curves. I've assumed that they are homologous to 0, which in the case of P3 means they are actually rationally equivalent to 0. Um, and somehow, from these curves, um, I get a number. Right? Has anybody seen how to take uh, such a configuration and get a number? Yes. Yeah. It's the linking number, yes. Yeah. yeah. But this game is enormous. So I could take p equal to a flag variety. And I, 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 it's a machine that just um, 
generates interesting numbers. Now, interesting numbers are nice, but it would be nice to kind of say something more coherent about these numbers. And so the, the numbers, I can think of the numbers. So linking number is in topology. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, right. In the sphere of tech. Here it is like over a field. That's complex geometry. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like to think of it that way, actually. But you, he's, he's right. They are, they are, from a suitable point of view, linking numbers. But don't ask me to, to give the details. Um, they are what they are for me. Uh, they are um, uh, these things. And, and the way to put them in a nice package uh, is you think of the numbers as values of functions, certain functions. On the Hilbert scheme of, um, well, the, maybe the Chow scheme. I, I don't, I, it's, it's, a, it's a little subtle. Uh, so I'll, I'll say Chow scheme. Uh, of the ambient, uh, of the ambient variety, right? I mean, in other words, I think of. Um, you mean pairs of elements? Yeah, you have to fix right, and right. Complementary dimensions is doing intersect give a function. They give a function, and and you think of it as a function. You choose one of the components, and you imagine moving that one component and fixing the others. Because I mean, to, to have an element in the in the Hilbert scheme you, you, or, or the Chow scheme, you need you, you're not allowed to take differences, so you fix uh, some of the information and you think of it as a function of the last piece as you move it around. Um, now, there, there, I, I say that casually, but there is a little bit of sophistication involved there. Uh, you have to look and and uh, uh, carefully. It's not enough to just look at 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 a point. Because to get a function on the Hilbert scheme, you, you need an algebra. It has to be a, a Zariski function. Um, so I need to look at uh, a variation of these things. And I need to check that the relevant um, solution uh, that I get, uh, the log, which would be the solution for the differential equation in the log, um, that the solution, when I exponentiate it, gives me um, uh, it was a risky function, right? And intuitively, this is true because you look at, so it's clear that it's going to be an analytic function away from the singularities, but you have to control the growth as it approaches the singularities. Uh, you can do this using the monodromy uh, pointwise on a punctured disk. Um, you can control the growth and find that you get polynomial growth, but I I haven't found a good reference to convince myself that that local information of polynomial growth uh, at infinity is enough to conclude that the function is actually uh, an algebraic function. I mean, it's actually so. I'm, I th I'm sure it's true, but but I just. Um, well, it, it's very naive, but in uh, in Sun's paper on heights, mm -hmm. uh, he mentions different link numbers in analytic uh, cohomology, and he gives a very uh, Naive way to compute them. Uh huh. Uh huh. But uh, you can't. Um, this is not naive. <laughs> uh, yes, you, yes. you can't compute. Uh, no, you're right. Uh, but but here I want to actually claim that you you get an algebraic function, and and that's a that's a step that uh, requires some care. You could think into a family, one family, your family. Yeah, that's what you have to be able to do. Right. And, and you, the differential equation works fine. You can show that, uh, in fact, the, the growth is uh, polynomial. Uh, and um, I mean, the, the growth of the log fellow is, is logarithmic. So when I exponentiate that. Connection, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's right. I mean. Well, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I, I'm just being a little nervous yeah. about. Uh, OK, yeah. No, it's OK. Um, so. Uh, now, there are two, um, that's, that's the first ap application. So this is the first application. And I call these generalized cross ratios. 
And I just pose as a, I think, really an interesting problem to, um, to say, uh, consider or compute Uh, for, for flag schemes. Um, Already in the case of P1, you could take more complicated divisors. Yeah, but it's clear how to deal with more complicated divisors. Yet you reduce your cost ratio. Yeah, you, you, the thing would fit into, you, you, you um, yeah, that, that, that goes fairly, fairly easily. But what doesn't go easily is if suppose instead of P1, I take uh, the Grassmann of some, your favorite Grassmann, the Grassmann of lines in P3 or something like that, and to take zero cycles there. I have no idea. Um, uh, so, so this is a, 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 a nice um, example of um, a case where um, uh, this poor man's excuse for, for an interesting extension uh, gets, gets a lot of uh, mileage. It's, it's really kind of an interesting guy. Um, so I want to talk about... Sorry. Does it have an algebraic interpretation? That is, you, you write, the, like in the, in the Gerson complex with compute charges, you write, you write the cycle as, as the image right. of some K1 yeah, cycle, you right. intersect with the other one. And, and in general, it's transversal, so you can evaluate the norm. Is it the same thing? Uh, I'm glad you asked. So what Offer is saying, you know, let, let's, let's take a minute to, to consider Offer's question, because I, I'm not sure I know the I, I, I would guess the answer, but I, I, don't, I, I can't uh, claim to, to be able to prove it. So what Offer is saying is that, at least in these simple cases, you can imagine cases where you can't play this game, where, where not, everything is not uh, algebra is ra not rationally equivalent to zero. Um, but in, in these cases, everything will be rationally equivalent to zero. And so what you could do, you could take z, and you know that you have some sort of sum of uh, higher dimensional things, let's say w with, uh, with a function fw, uh, and the, the, the divisor, the sum over W of the divisors of FW uh, will be Z. Right? But now you could take your W and, no, no, no oh, sorry, uh, Y. Take your Y and you intersect Y with the W's. And if you've played the game cleverly, this will be um, a, a zero cycle. Uh, and so you can imagine evaluating fw at y dot w, right? and taking the product over the, the various, uh, sorry, too many w's here. Um, uh, well, no, I just, w is just, just no problem, I mean, just, just, just that. I mean, it means the product of, of the obvious thing. Um, the problem, of course, that you run into is I, I made a choice here of how to write W as the divisor uh, of, uh, of functions uh, uh, on a cycle. I could take another cycle and write it, and then I need to know that I get the same answer. But as Offer points out, that's a problem in K-theory, um, because if I have two of them, then um, the f's and the one minus the f's on the other uh, represent an element in the appropriate k group. And the answer is offer, I don't know. I, I'm sure that that probably works, but I, I haven't had time to work it out. OK, let me uh, move on to the, the second, because this is a problem in geometry. Uh, now I want to talk about a problem uh, in, uh, in arithmetic. Um, which let me remind myself how I was going to approach that. Yeah, I mentioned, um, let me put this up here. I mentioned um, minor pi there. Um, the Gross-Zagier conjecture. And uh, let me 
uh, I've never been able to understand the paper of Gross and Zaghi, or there were several papers. I can't understand any of them um, in any deep sense. I, I can sort of understand the words, but, but the real depth. Um, because they, they really uh, focus on the uh, modular forms and, and uh, Q expansions and so on, and, and I get lost. Um, but uh, Anton Mellet uh, wrote a beautiful thesis uh, uh, it's still on the archive uh, from 2008, his thesis. And so I, I recommend if algebraic geometers want to understand gross Aguirre, they look first at Mellet's thesis because it's, it's, uh, it really gives a nice uh, geometric shape. So um, how are we going to get a Kummer extension from arithmetic. Um, yeah. So this, um, see, when, when do, uh, quarter of? When do I stop? Uh, quarter two. So I have 20 minutes. OK. So um, I'm going to give myself x, which would be uh, nicely nice, smooth uh, projective. Um, variety, uh, dimension, whatever. Uh, dimension, dimension, dimension. Uh, well, I guess I guess let's make life surface. Uh, make life simple, smooth, projective dimension. Two be a, be a, be a surface. Okay. O over Q. Well, over a number field, but all number fields are called Q. OK, because it's late in the day. Um, OK, so I'm interested in motivic cohomology. Um, and I'm old fashioned, so uh, I'll be interested in actually chow 2 um, x 1. Uh, so for the modern uh, uh, crowd, this is uh, H, uh, H4 motivic X, um, H3, H3, 3 motivic X, Z of 2. Um, but for old-fashioned people, it's simply you take X cross box, where box is P1 minus 1. And you take a co-dimension 2 cycle, so call it z, uh, on, on here, co-dimension 2 cycle, a suitable, a suitable co-dimension 2 cycle. I don't, again, it's late in the day. I don't want to get too tangled up. Um, and uh, this, this, uh, this uh, cycle um, carries a, a higher Abel Jacobi. So there is a higher Abel Jacobi uh, map, which uh, maps, well, let me give the general, uh, the general thing. Uh, so capital phi, let's take p comma n, maps chow p of some, I'll call it something else, let's say v uh, n, uh, to, um, and it's kind of a mess, uh, h uh, 2 p minus n minus 1 v c modulo uh, f P uh, H two N two 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 P two P minus N minus one of V C plus H two P minus N minus one of V Z of P. Well that's the kind of thing that only a mother could love, but it reveals itself 
uh, to be, this is isomorphic to X1 in the category of mixed height structures of Z of 0 by uh, H2P minus N minus 1 of V Z of P. OK, so that's the general um, shape of this, this thing. So um, that means associated, if I have an element um, in here, well, let me stick with the general numbers for a minute. We'll shift to, to the special cases in a second. But if I have an element in here, let's say alpha, um, then I'm going to get an extension. Um, put it over here. 0 goes to h. 2p minus n minus 1 v z p goes to some e, which depends on alpha, goes to, uh, I'm shifting back and forth between z and q. I apologize. Uh, I'll stick with z here. Uh, to 0. Excuse me, I have a question. Uh -huh. In the definition of the other Jacobi map, you don't need null homologous um, elements. Of yeah, you you do, but I am away. That's only a condition uh, uh, when this number is zero. Null homologous is, is, is so the number will never be zero. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you asked that. Just just forget that. Uh, the number for us, the number will never be zero. Okay, uh, so it's not a problem. But anyway. Uh, you have, if we start out, if we give ourselves a class in motivic cohomology, um, we end up not quite with this, but with an extension that has some other uh, more elaborate uh, kernel here. <coughs> but we can imagine pushing out, so I'll put a question mark, we can imagine pushing out to z of 1. So the construction of Kummer extensions then amount to clever choices of push outs, because if I push out, then I get I'll call it k alpha. I should really call it k alpha beta, because it depends on this, uh, this beta, um, to z of 0. Zero. So if I can do that, if I can find a, a push out, then I will have a Kummer extension. And so, oh, too many alphas. Oh my God, it's a disaster. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Gamma and delta. And then V is X? Or, 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 or. V, no, no, v is, v is not X. V is going to become X in a minute. OK, V is a, a, a test object. OK. So in any case, uh, this is a delta. And so if I can find in my particular situation, uh, my particular situation uh, will be this one, uh, then I, I win. Um, and then I get an interesting, uh, an interesting number. And I'll get an interesting number, that is the period, which will be a logarithm. It will be the logarithm of something, uh, hopefully, algebraic. And it will therefore fit, at least roughly, into the, the rubric of uh, Grosaghi. OK, so how do I, how do I cook up uh, a, an example, an interesting example? Um, yeah, so let me. Get rid of this here. So I'll take, I'm going to replace V. V will become X, which will be a surface. All right. And um, I will be interested in my, my, my higher, my motivic cohomology cast. Uh, will be in chow 2 x 1. OK? Now, um, that's going to give me an extension 
um, let's see if we can get the numbers right here. My extension is going to be 0 to h2 x uh, z of 2 uh, goes to, uh, I call it e alpha, and call it e, just call it e, um, to z of 0 goes to 0. And I now have to find a map to z of 1. Okay? So we have some smart people here. Given a surface, uh, and look at h2, x, z of 2. How do I get a map to z of 1? <laughs> Using a curve. Yeah, that's it. Using a curve. Using a curve. I, I guess we could have bet on who would, who would win the contest. <laughs> OK, so if here we take the class of a divisor, which is a curve, the, the class of a divisor um, sits in, if you like, h2 x z of 1. And so uh, technically speaking, it gives me a map uh, to h4 x z of um, 2 and 1 is 3, right? And h4 xz of 2 is, tr is a trivial high structure, so therefore this is in fact isomorphic to z of 1. Okay? So um, I still have 10 minutes. My God. I'm running out of things to say. So um, uh, suddenly, we get the kind of extension we want. Z of 1 goes to, I can't call it E anymore, goes to some F goes to Z of 0. Goes to 0. And so um, this is a Comer extension. And its period will be log of, of, of something. And um, now you have to be a number theorist and be clever to fit the, the, the particular uh, parameters that you want in order to calculate um, the height, um, in order to do a height calculation uh, of the sort that you're interested in. Um, I, won't, I won't try to, try to get that uh, precise, but the, it's, it's, uh, it's in the literature. The point I simply want to make um, is that um, it, it all uh, goes back to this very, very simple guy. Now, um, there is uh, one sort of interesting little thing to understand. Um, why is it that we get log of an algebraic number? Right? Because, I mean, anything is log of something. Right? In some sense, I haven't proved anything. But how are we going to get log of, a, of an algebraic number? Well, that is going to depend on this game here. So let me just take a minute to finish the talk uh, to explain uh, what, what happens. Uh, in the, this is the, so this can go. Um, so what happens? Uh, Let's see here. So I let's I, I want a, a, a cycle. Uh, so I want an element in channel two x one. So that means I want a cycle. So call it say uh, um, t uh, is a cycle. Codimension two cycle on uh, x cross. Box. Now, x is a surface, and box is, is one-dimensional, so this is co-dimension 2 on, uh, on a three-dimensional thing. So t, t is, a, is a sum of curves. Or is a, let me say t is, is a curve. It's a linear combination of, of, of curves, and there is some constraint about it, so it should not have a boundary. So the boundary should be 0, so it represents an element in the motivic cohomology. 
And so I have a curve then, t, uh, I'll write t contained in x cross box, but I'm going to intersect with uh, a d. And so, in fact, uh, what I can do is I can do my intersection here. So I can dot, I can look at t dot uh, d cross box. And uh, what will this be? This will be a sum of points xi, um, comma, um, well, xi, comma, yi, let's say. Um, in, so xi, xi, and yi are, are in here. Okay? So now we have to use, uh, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of short of time, but we have to use the construction of the uh, higher Abel Jacobi class. And you find it's kind of confusing the construction of the higher Abel Jacobi class, but in this particular case, it's quite easy because, in general, it involves an iterated integral. Um, but here, because we just have points, it's just the log. So the, the higher Abel Jacobi class will basically just be log of, it will be uh, log of the yi, that is the, the, the value here, yi, sum over i, uh, at, at the points xi. And um, maybe I'll stop, but the, the, the fact that, that it's just log here is what tells you, I mean, it's what, it, it, it says that um, you have a chance of saying something about gross side gain because uh, you're just looking at a, at a log here and not a more complicated, uh, not a more complicated expression. Um, so, um, well, just to finish, um, if you have been saying, well, gee, I mean, th these things are kind of boring, um, maybe what would happen if I put a 2 here instead of a 1, right? Um, well, you, 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 the world would end, but, but aside from that, um, uh, you, could, you, could, uh, you could do a calculation, but it would not be as, as easy. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, in particular, you would not get a log you would get something uh, much more much more subtle. Um, there is recent work on that. Um, uh, Matt Kerr. So let's see. Golishev. Kerr. And a Japanese fellow whose name I'm sorry I forget. Um, somebody uh, just put a paper on the on the archive. Um, which deals in a somewhat different, from a diff somewhat different approach about how to deal with the uh, situation here. It's, it's not, it doesn't have this flavor uh, at all. It's much more subtle. Uh, it involves uh, uh, limiting. Uh, yeah. I, uh, you can look on the archive and, and find there. Their paper. Okay, I stop. So, yes. how does the sum of the log? You you want to have high mm -hmm. average according to something like this, but before you discussed it, I mean, because for you it was something analytic going to some kind of intermediate, uh, of intermediate Jacobia, mm -hmm. of C. Mm -hmm. So, how do you write this thing in this? I mean. Ah, um, yeah. So you're asking how basically how do I get this 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 invariant uh, that that characterizes this this extension? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I think Ofer is asking how does that formula, the sum of log y i x i, connect to the Abel Jacobi method? Uh, yeah. Um, 
Well, the XIs don't, don't, uh, don't play any role. Uh, the, the, the main thing is that I should write a little bracket XI here. It's just a point on the curve, and it, doesn't, uh, it's just, it counts as 1. So basically, what you're seeing here is the sum of the log of the YI. Um, and, but Offer is asking a more subtle question, how to get from that the, the I, mean, I would, my feeling is that you're asking how to get from that. But just a simple minus question, because you wrote H2P minus N minus 1, V of C divided by FP. You wrote something which is in the... Uh, ah, so... The higher, the, the higher upper, uh -huh. the, it was a map of the higher char group to some analog of intermediate Jacobian. Yeah. So maybe let me try again. Offer. Um, so um, I said that the, we were going to get an extension uh, uh, that that the higher Abel Jacobi would give us an extension of z of zero uh, by h two uh, of x uh, z of two. Um, and then I said we're going to multiply by d. And then that's going to carry this to x1, z of 0, z of 1. That's clear. But what's maybe not clear is that my higher Abel Jacobi is going to carry my chow, uh, chow 2, x1 uh, into here. But now, what happens uh, when I go down here? And what I want to claim is that we have a sort of a functoriality, um, which says that here I have chow 2 of, um, uh, I'm going to have multiplication by, by d. Uh, but it's going to multiply this cycle. right? I, I have a cycle on x cross uh, this, this box, and I'm going to multiply that cycle by d on the, first, on the first thing. So this will be multiplication by d, and this will carry me um, to uh, whatever, wherever it goes. Uh, it should go to the chow 2 of x. Let me write x intersect d, comma 1. That's a little abuse of notation. But x intersect d, this is a curve. I mean, it is d, in fact. So I'm sorry, I'm being stupid. It is just d. So actually, it is the higher the copy It is, you know, I was confused about which other the copy mode you use. So because you intersect with the, so the, the sum of log of Mr. P, it's the first the lower of the upper the mm -hmm. And so it is just giving the logs which are Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's not I thought it would be up I mean I was I mixed the two words, so it's not yeah. true. No, I think it's okay. It's just it's just the the log. So somehow uh, I mean the situation is pregnant with combinatorial possibilities. In other words, uh, there's much that I don't understand, but I think this has the possibility of throwing a new light on the gross Aguirre machine uh, because it, it gets turned into a machine for constructing these, these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, Kummer extensions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, in the special case when x is the product of two modular curves, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So the same construction was considered in the work of Samit Dasgupta. Ah, ah, that I don't know about. On the um, periodic L function for the symmetric. Uh, I, let me get from you uh, after, if you... If you oh, and we, we actually have generalized this, oh. in the process oh, of well, generalizing uh, this to let's, let's modular surfaces. So. Oh, oh that, that's fantastic. Yeah, okay, so, so great. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't give you the appropriate credit. Um, well, it, it just... I just noticed that it is the same construction. Ah, ah, oh, okay, well, fantastic. Um, but I, I, I do want to say, apropos of, of that, that uh, I had mentioned Anton Mellet, but the case Mellet considered was a, um, a modular curve and um, a product of two, a product of, 
of the, the universal family of elliptic curves with itself. And um, to uh, get to Grosage, he took uh, in here a, a um, what's it called, uh, a point corresponding whether you had an extra, we had weight drop, we had extra endomorphisms. CM. Yeah, or CM, a CM point, yeah. Um, Ah, so, so, so fantastic. Uh, well, let's <coughs> talk over cocktails, but I actually have another question. <laughs> so have you considered um, what happens when one replaces the Abel Jacobi map by the periodic analog, by the symptomic um, Abel Jacobi map? Uh, no, but I have a sense that maybe you have. <laughs> well, um, in special case, well, uh -huh. some Intersculptor consider that, I mean, in a special case, but it would be interesting I mean, to see what comes out generally. So yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and uh, maybe one could also do the geometric uh, game uh, periodically. Uh, um, yeah, uh, great. Any other questions? Uh. I have a question. Uh -huh. um, when, when you take a um, uh, higher color extension, you mean, you mean n, instead of one. n instead of 1. Okay. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but. I thought this would be related to k to n minus one. Yeah, right. Uh, it should be an n logarithm instead of a logarithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not going to get a logarithm. I, I, I don't know what you're going to get, but you're certainly not going to get a logarithm. There's not the the. the you Are you going to get an n logarithm? Um. Well, I, you're going to get the Bailenson regulator. It's going to come into the machine, uh, in a kind of a, uh, from a maybe not in an obvious way, but, but the answer will be, will reflect the balance and regulator. Because, I mean, basically, this, this is a, a balance and class. It's an H1 with, with Z of N coefficients. Uh, and yeah, so you will get the balance. But the difference is that um, w this is rigid. I mean, the, the, whereas, uh, yeah. Uh, by the gate condition, you've got some linear combination. I guess, yeah. I mean, that's right. Yeah, by, yeah, but but it won't. It won't. You you, yeah. It'll be rigid. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Then thanks, Spencer.